YouTube. Uh, gonna do another what I eat video two days consecutively. Could be three, could be four. Uh, starting off, all the fruit I have in my house, I got two mangoes, that's it. So I'm gonna eat these, and then probably in a half an hour or so, I'll, I'll ride my bike down the hill, about a quarter mile away from uh, the nearest market. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna eat these two mangoes. You any thing you understand or any realm there's this kind of you know super elite power like the monarchy or whatever and you know the class system is so ingrained here that um it's, it's kind of unbelievable for people that really don't don't really live in the uk or really to, to kind of conceive of there's a kind of deep deep sort of subjugation it's just on you because there are people that wander in this country and they have no perception that they kind of rise above their station at all they, 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 they believe that this power is all well all powerful there is there is no no way to connect with it or join it or overthrow it or uh, these kind of things i mean that, that's the kind of thing i'm trying to get at why why does that exist here what, what is this so special about this country where it has one of the most ingrained class systems on the planet that's essentially it <laughs> right no it's, it's a big question i mean i can't you know answer it with any particular comprehensiveness but i can share a few thoughts british moms are pretty violent and uh, like 80, 80 to 85 percent of British moms admit to hitting their babies. And there was just a study done recently. I think it was just released a few days ago on uh, April 15th, a day, day or so ago, two, two days, two or three days ago. And it's the first real-time study of spanking. I think it took place in the U U.S. But you know, this is a special relationship uh, that uh, U.S. moms have with U.K. moms. And so a, a bunch of parents, uh, moms mostly, uh, vast majority were moms. They agreed to wear these recorders during a sort of typical evening. Uh, I, they did it for a week or so. And then they turned over these recordings to the researchers. And the researchers basically found that the moms were hitting their children continually and repeatedly without warning, without explanation, without reasoning. And where most parents say, well, we hit our kids 15 to 20 times a year, the researchers calculated that these kids were being hit on average 18 times a week. The children in the study ranged from seven months old to just shy of four years. Yep. Seven months to three years old. These moms were raining blows down upon these helpless and dependent children to the tune of 18 hits a week. And... There was no, there's supposed to be some, quote, best practices for spanking. And those best practices are only as a last resort, only for serious infractions, only after trying to reason with the child, and never more than twice. And they found these kids were being hit many times. One kid hit her toddler seven times straight. And one, one day? In one day? No, it, yeah, in, in one go. Yeah, in one go, hit the toddler seven times straight. It's just outrageous. And so, and these, so all of these hits were completely from, quote, minor infractions, as they called them. Which is to say, basically, the kids didn't respond in the way the moms wanted in the moment. That uh, the kids didn't do something. Just fellas, the dream machine. <laughs> Schwinn, uh, village peddler. Look at that seat. My dad gave me this bike. It was his. He probably got this bike 15 years ago, and he gave it to me probably. Well, he gave it to me in 2007 or 8 when I moved down to uh, my university to use there. So it's pretty old. I mean, it's like I would say it's at least 15 years old. So cool. All right. So the safest option right now is to take the uh, sidewalk. Can do this when you got the open road. I mean, no behind me, I'm good. Plus, I'm only gonna be on this for like two more seconds. I gotta cross over. And here we go. Ah. <laughs> it's kind of hard to do this one-handed, but. Uh, so this is my my ride to uh, the market that I go to. So it's really really quick actually. I literally can get there in ah, four minutes on a bike. This is via the bike trail. Huh, something sweet just dropped in my mouth from a tree. <laughs> This is a park, Fort McHenry. Uh, 
Cross, cross of the road. Uh, so as you can see, I live really close to town. Cross this little bridge. And on the other side of this big IHOP is the... is the market that I go to. I always say, if no one's coming, you can go. <laughs> so then... Yeah, right here. This is the Jewel Osco I go to. <laughs> so quick. Literally go down a hill, go through a park, Go over a bridge and you're there. And I just park my uh, bike outside. No need to lock it up. These people are good people. So I just got back. Um, I got a little bit more than I was anticipating, so I had to ride one-handed <laughs> all the way up that hill. Still kind of breathing hard from it. All right, so here's my haul. I'll show you what I got. I picked up a package of uh, tangerines, which have a different flavor, you know, from mandarin oranges, and I, I quite like them. Um, recycle if you can. Uh, I picked up four of these packages of these dates again. Uh, I picked up some more romaine hearts because I love that recipe that uh, Banana TV showed where they uh, do rice, beans, some salsa, and even some hummus um, inside of a lettuce wrap. It's so good. Uh, some cut leaf spinach. Compost. <laughs> uh, what else? Is spaghetti, whole wheat spaghetti. Organic. I try to buy organic when I can, guys. I probably would buy 75% to 80% organic. Um, some uh, organic green peas, mangoes and onion. These I bought conventional. Mm, I bought three mangoes, one sweet Vidalia onion. Um, and then what's in the backpack? What's in the box? What's in the box? Um, yeah. Wheat, uh, rotini, organic. It was a two for three deal for this and the spaghetti. You know, whenever I find those little deals or whatever, I, I usually take them. So that's kind of what prompted the bigger grocery haul was doing the kind of the deals where you buy two, you get a little bit of a break. So there's the three other ones. I uh, bought a sack of potatoes, organic russet potatoes, which will be a nice, you know, this one-handed, uh, nice dinner or two. Uh, tomato puree, which is ingredients. Tomato puree, naturally derived citric acid. So basically, no added sodium. It's good. It's organic. Um, organic diced tomatoes. That was a two. I had a, a $1 off coupon if I bought two of them. Uh, some organic uh, mild salsa, which I like to be refrigerated. And this was actually 10 for 10, so I bought one. Um, a, you know, for a dollar, organic garbanzo beans. I figured, you know, should I buy organic and, you know, spend 10 cents more? Or should I buy the conventional? And I just thought to myself, you know what, we're voting with our dollars, and it just makes sense for that extra 10 cents to just go organic, so. Whew! Alright, so that was my grocery haul. I'll show you what I eat. Uh, you know what, I'm going to probably just go ahead and say right now, I'm going to eat one of these packages of uh, dates. So, I'm hoping all of this food will last me until next Wednesday when I'm going to uh, Panama, because I don't really want to spend any more money. I, I have like $25 in the bank, so. Well, I will after everything goes through, you know what I'm saying? Know what I'm saying? All you uh, paycheck to paychecks people out there know what I'm saying. It's so foundational to everything in society that, like, like if you can't see that, then you can't, not you, but if, if people can't see that, they 17. don't understand why... Just coming over here, eating some of these wilting chives. I love them, because compared to green onions, they're very subtle onion you taste. Uh, public officials, kings and queens, a lot of influential people are here. Now, now, Charlie, you know, what's your assessment of, of this year's Bilderberg? Where do you see it going? Well, you were, I mean, you were saying, you were saying about interested parties. Yeah. You know, like, you know, like Big Oil. So, you know, the chairman and CEO of Shell, World Dutch Shell, are here. Um, and so, you know, they are answerable to their shareholders. And so, 
the, the interests of Shell are being, uh, at least, but you'd hope if you're a shareholder, if I was a shareholder in Shell, I'd hope that my chairman and CEO weren't just here to play cards and, and, and pull party poppers to celebrate 60 years of Bilderberg. I'd be hoping they were here to, to promote the interests of Shell. You've also got a lot of um, industrial and business lobby groups represented here, like British American Business, and they've got a lot of top members here. People like Douglas Flint, who's also the head of HSBC. And so you've got the lobbyists, and, you know, lobbyists don't kind of just stop lobbying. You know, so this is this is a giant lobbying opportunity. That's what I perceive it as. And, but unlike most lobbying, you know, when you think of lobbyists, you think, oh, these are people that go to the lobby of parliament and sort of petition politicians. This is the exact opposite. These guys are so powerful that the lobby is, this is here, yep. and it, the politicians are kind of invited into the lobby. Yep. So it's it's a complete inversion of what we sort of understand lobbying to be. Yep. Um, but, you know, that's what it's three days of... of of, of opportunity for these people. Yeah. To me, if it's anything, it's, it's the proof that uh, corporate and private interests uh, meeting with public interests, you know, it's, it's a clear transparency that, uh, you know, the interests of the very few are always going to be uh, met, when, especially when they all collude together in private and in secret with all these security guards and all these crazy security measures. Is there anything else that people should know okay. about yourself or the coverage here uh, that you're doing or just about Bilderberg 2014? Something I'd say is that both, I mean, we're here in Copenhagen, so it might explain why to the, some of the Scandinavian people here, but there's both Wallenberg brothers are here, and it's worth looking at, you know, someone like the Wallenberg, um, investment uh, interests are so gigantic. I mean, they're, billion, they're tens of billions of pounds. These are people who are huge investors. Uh, people like Henry Kravitz from KKR. These are, these, they're, they're in charge of billion pound private equity interests, uh, multi-billion pound. And, and so you, it requires a leap of faith to think that they are here trying to help, help the world, help the public. They're helping themselves. Yep. You know, they definitely are. Charlie, thank you so much for all your work. Your Twitter's going to be in the description below. Really appreciate your writing and everything you're doing. And stay tuned to WeAreChange.org. I will try to stay out of jail. We've already been arrested two, to, you know, two times already harassed today here. Um, and uh, really thank you so much for watching. YouTube.com forward slash WeAreChange is the website. Check out everything we're doing. We rely heavily on you and your support. That's why we are fully independent, covering something that the mainstream media never will. So stay tuned to WeAreChange.org. Thank you so much for watching. Yucky ducky. Man, it seems like in every package there's one. Action, reaction, it's all part of their grand plan. Japanese atrocities against China, like the rape of Nanking, the wholesale slaughter of women and children, and the gruesome medical experimentation on the Chinese people gave rise to Mao. Mao murdered 60 to 80 million Chinese. Henry Kissinger ordered more bombs to be dropped on Cambodia than Japan than was dropped on Japan during World War II. This led to 750,000 dead Cambodian peasants and gave legitimacy to the murderous Khmer Rouge under Pol Pot. The world is catching on to this game. The U.S. cries about human rights against nationalists trying to control their country from foreign provocateurs, yet we fund the terror through the IMF and arms sales all around the world. Think of the trillions of dollars that's spent to modernize our military. That is only necessary because we send billions of dollars of weapons all over the world, funded through our foreign aid, to make the world a more dangerous place to fuel more defense spending. Our 737 foreign military bases around the world serve as a constant reminder of American power and a great source of resentment to those countries. 14 days. Many of them have been there bad. for over 60 years. And for what? Why are we still in Korea? Why are we still in Japan? Strong in the boy. Strong. When you, when you throw someone 100% off the door, they get very weak. Especially if you're an endurance athlete. Because when you do an endurance athlete, you're always doing shit. You, know, you burn a lot more calories than someone who's maybe doing a bit of weights or whatever. So it's probably easier if you're doing weights to do it overall. But even then... Once you start traveling or you have a family or a regular job, it can be tricky to get enough fruit calories. So that's why you have to have a backup plan for people. You can't make people feel guilty because they go to travel and there's nothing for them to eat. Or you expect them, all they can fucking eat is cucumbers and dates for the whole week. I mean, that's, that's just unrealistic. And if you want to do that, that's fine. I've done it. That's pretty cool. But I'm saying not people want to live on dates and cucumbers, you know, walnuts and lettuce for dinner or whatever. It's just it's insane. So I sincerely believe it is a teaching of orthorexia to say to someone, 100% raw is law, there's no backup plan. In my opinion, that is a teaching, a fundamental teaching of orthorexic behavior. Like trying to tell people that if you eat a bowl of rice, you're going to get obese. When the slimmest cultures eat rice. You tell people if you eat a bowl of corn, you can't run. When the world's fastest fucking marathoners eat corn. So it's fruit, number one. Starches, backup plan, whatever. Incorporate both into your lifestyle to get the best results. Then you can never fail. All right? Another thing was that the United Nations, they have this, this rule, right? If you if 20% of the population, adult population, if 20% of the adult population approximately has access to less than 2,100 calories, a famine is called upon that country. If 20% of the population can't obtain at least 2,100 calories a day in the adults, it's a famine. That's a crisis. So Lauren is eating 1,200 calories a day. And famine level is 2,100 for 20% of the population. You know, so we, I'll call bullshit on that one. I'll call bullshit on that one. So that, that's just one of the quick tips and hints and criticisms. You know, do you need to water fast? You don't. It's a fucking waste of money. It could kill you. It's going to drain you for a long time. If you want to get fit, lean, and toned, listen to Doing Right and Freely. Listen to us. Freely's done the fasting. It's a, a good lesson for her of how fucked it is. It depletes you. Can you name one person who has exceptional fitness from doing water fasting? One person. Everyone gains their weight back. Look at the girls who do a water fasting. The weight comes back on. 
You know, you lose so much of your life when you do a water fast. It's cost you 20 grand or whatever. You've got to work, pay it off, unless your parents are fucking loaded. And they say, yeah, I want to go water fast. Cost me, daddy. Hey, here's 20 grand. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's not, it's, it's, it's bullshit. In my opinion, it's bullshit. If you do want to go to, to do an, uh, water fasting, do an internship. You know, I did that. That was good fun. I actually did enjoy that. So, you go there. I went there and learned and just sort of got to see what the process. You're paying to be like a bit of a spectator or whatever. That was a good lesson for me. I was like, you know what? No. And then I did follow up with people who did fast that year in previous years and, and no one really raved about it. People get hyped up about it because you know, they spent $20,000 or whatever, time off work, airfares and thing. You spend 20 grand, you're going to have to tell yourself that it's a worthwhile investment. Otherwise, you're going to feel like, fuck, I blew 20 grand. What a fucking idiot. <laughs> you know, so you're going to have to. It's like people buy like a, a $5,000 suit or whatever. Like, yeah, it's pretty good. You sort of have to justify it. But, uh, so that's my comments and criticisms. Don't hate Doug. Don't hate Lauren. Just share my comments and criticisms. I'm not financial for over anyone. You can come to me and freely. We will not bullshit you. If you ask for our opinion, we'll give it to you. We won't fuck around and go, well, you know, we don't have to in 2014. We're not affiliated with anybody financially anymore. So we can give you this low down, no bullshit advice and experience. We don't have bullshit to sell you. Look at what someone sells. Look at how much they charge. And then you'll see where people stand. Thanks for watching. Chico likes tangerines. Chico likes tangerines. Chico likes tangerines. <laughs> oh, obviously not that one. He left it. If you're not going to eat it, don't bag. Eat it. <laughs> yeah, sure. You better eat it. Just kidding. I don't really care. It's one little piece of tangerine. <laughs> <laughs> He'll eat it eventually. So five tangerines. Mm. Thirty-one dates, two mangoes today. For a total of twenty-six sixty-five. Two hundred two thousand six hundred sixty-five calories. I'm at right now it's ten to four o'clock, so maybe five, six o'clock I'm gonna make a high carb vegan dinner. So I should do that pasta, I'm gonna do the tomato puree. Uh organic uh everything's organic. Every single thing I'm gonna eat today, except the tangerines. And mangoes has been organic. So the dates are organic. Pasta's organic. Spinach is organic. Tomato puree is organic. The uh, beans, or, uh, garbanzos are organic. So for dinner, <clears throat> rotini pasta, uh, tomato puree, spinach, garbanzo beans, probably mixed all up. It'll be really good. So hang tight. You'll see what I eat for dinner. Today I have the green machine smoothie. My mom's like favorite smoothie and the one that she's taught me to make. I'm about to blend that up. And what did you do this morning, mom? I went for a walk into the park and then a jog with Fizzy. Mm -hmm. We saw a koala bear, which was lovely. Nice. Nestled in the tree. Uh, and the fastest sleep. sleep. No footage. No uh, footage. Sorry. Uh, our international <laughs> friends would love that. Everyone was looking at it. South yeah. Australia is like, there's koalas everywhere. Well, right. they used to be in Queensland too. Yeah, they're just everywhere. But residential um, development of... Stop that. Yeah, they've destroyed their habitat. And we were also talking about an interesting controversial subject. It kind of just came out of nowhere. Oh, well. I don't know how we started like, talking about it, but pooping in front of your partner. <laughs> Children too. Yeah, running around. I'll stop anyway. Yeah, yeah, I've always done a few times. So many that. things that we ah, yes, I'm sure. Little bit queen. <laughs> we know. Um, I learned. So what do you guys think? What do you think? Would you do you poop in front of your partner? You can put it in the comments below. I think it'd be kind of funny. I know it's one of those subjects. No one will want to admit it. Was done, and I was like, let's just ignore that question. Yes. Shall we? <laughs> yes. And I'm a bit sad today because Mum is going. This is her last day, and have more, four more tangerines, so eleven in total. kind of tired. I'll lay down for a little bit after this and then have my dinner. And that sun, you know. Yeah. That sun just wears you down. I will say, staying raw later in the, till later in the day makes me feel better, honestly. It makes me feel lighter on my feet, makes me want to get up and do stuff, whereas before I would just eat like a high-carb um, cooked meal, you know, at lunch or 
you know, two, three o'clock, and I don't know. I mean, it, I guess it's true what they say. Fruit is best. Fruit is king. But raw is not law. You know what I'm saying? I want to be one of those people that comes to this lifestyle and fails because I couldn't get my raw, I couldn't get my fruit, I couldn't get enough fruit, you know? That's not me. I'm not going to let it happen, so. Dinners for, for right now will be cooked. But I'm fine with that, guys. Totally fine with that. I actually look forward to my cooked meals. You know, maybe maybe later on, like, fi when I finally live in Hawaii, when I finally live somewhere tropical, I might make the switch to raw. If I've got mature trees on my property that are, you know, mature fruit trees, papaya, mango, banana, sapote, termoya, ramatan, just all those tropical fruits, if I have all that stuff at the ready, why the heck would I eat cooked, you know? Mmm. That one was a lot more sugary and tangy than the other ones. Wow, that was, this is a good one. Mmm. <laughs> I'm gonna go out on a limb and say this is the best tangerine I've ever eaten in my whole life. Mmm. Mm -mm -mm. Perfect ripeness, perfect flavor. You know how when you're little and you're at school or whatever, you have like canned tangerines and they taste like crap? They're just like bland? A couple of these ones kind of tasted like that. Like just not enough sugar, not enough tanginess. But that one, wow. Now how's this one gonna follow? Ugh. Nowhere near as much zest. As much as it. So this is a little preview of dinner. Um, as you can see, I've got <clears throat> the rotini pasta in there, the spinach, and I just added the garbanzos in there. You know, one of the things I used to, well, I still kind of pity, is wasting this water. So what I'm going to do is, when I'm straining it, I'm going to, I've got a bowl under here that I'm going to save it. Because um, you know what? I'm just in here, and I'm just like tasting some of this. Mm, tastes so good. Like pasta water with, um, you know, spinach. You got like a spinach. Mm. It's like, almost like a soup, you know? And so... If I save this, I can use that again, maybe to, I don't know, boil potatoes or, I don't even know. Use as a vegetable broth for a soup or something, you know? So, I don't know. I think I saw one of those in, I saw this concept in uh, one of Tingy J Bird's videos he did, uh, where he, you know, boils stuff, and then he'll, or he steams stuff, and he'll use the water again. It just tastes so good, like, I don't know. Mm-mm. I'm almost, I'm like, a little bit, I almost want to just make this a soup, and eat the soup like this, but... I've got the tomato puree over there. Um, and I really want that tomato flavor, so if I add a tomato, maybe I can do that. Maybe I won't, um, maybe I won't uh, strain all the water, but you just leave a little bit left and then use the tomato puree. Can I, or no, yeah, the tomato puree. Because I got the diced tomatoes and the puree, so I don't know what I'm going to do. But I think no matter what I do, it's going to be good. Mm -mm. Yummy. Here it is, guys. Here is my dinner. And I'm literally eating it out of the pan that I cooked dinner. Out of the, yeah. So, just take a look at that. It's so good, you guys. I added a little bit of uh, garlic powder and chili powder. So, garbanzo beans, spinach, tomato puree, and rotini pasta. Mmm. This, uh, this is one of my favorite meals. Alright, so, real quick while I have you, I'm going to break it down for you today. Mmm. Alright. So, in the morning, we had mangoes. We had raw, two raw mangoes, 31 dates, 11 small tangerines, spaghetti whole wheat cooked pasta, tomato puree, uh, chickpeas, garbanzo beans, spinach. Um, you know what I do is I add the totals, uh, from the package, the calories from the package, and then I find something very similar, if not identical, on, um, chronometer and chronometer, I think it is chronometer, and <clears throat> then I make sure the calories match. So, as you can see, that is a little difficult sometimes, you gotta get the amount at, like, 6.87, 3.15, whatever it is to get the calorie amount just right. Alright, so what am I at today? I'm at 5,021 calories. Uh... Let's go to the breakdown. Today, a little bit more protein than yesterday. 87.2% carbs, 8.6% protein, 4.3% fat. Am I am I 80, 10, 10 or better? Yes. So, if you don't mind, I'm going to uh, let you guys go so I can finish this awesome meal. Don't forget to uh, like this video if you liked it, share, and may your dates always be dank. Peace.